I'd like to share a story about something that changed my life with you today. And maybe it'll change yours too. And while we're at it, why don't we have some fun? How many of you were very ambitious young adults? <laughs> wow, me too. I was a very ambitious young man. As a matter of fact, my only goal when I entered the workforce was to earn as much money as possible. I couldn't earn enough. I wasn't ashamed of that. I came from a poor family. I remember when I was a little boy, my dad left home for a pack of cigarettes and he never came back. My sister and I were raised on government assistance. I vowed that when I was old enough, I would earn enough money where I'd never be laughed at for the clothes I wore or the house I lived in again. And early on in my career, I had a very nice job in Los Angeles. I worked for a large company. And on this particular day, the company was having its annual manager's meeting at a very nice hotel. The president of the company would be there himself handing out Superior Performance Achievement Awards. Now, I wasn't getting one. And frankly, looking back, I didn't deserve one either. But that didn't stop an ambitious young man from wanting attention and recognition anyway. So I had this plan. I would sit in the front row, so close to the president, I could almost touch the podium. And when he opened up the meeting to Q&A, I had this brilliant question I was going to ask, this very intelligent question that would just rain attention and recognition all over me. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. But just a few minutes before the meeting began, my phone began buzzing. I got calls all the time, and I thought I would wait till after the meeting, but it kept going off, and clearly it was an important issue. So I thought, I'll step out of the meeting, take the call, and I'll use the restroom at the same time. I can be back before Q&A starts. Now, I ended my call about 10 minutes later in the beautiful, gorgeous, majestic restroom of the San Gabriel Hilton Hotel. Gorgeous restroom. But the first thought that came to my mind was this. What a cheap hotel the San Gabriel Hilton is. They don't even have urinals in the men's restroom. <laughs> and then the next thought that came to me right after that thought was, you're in the women's restroom. <laughs> Quickly, I panicked, I turned, I rushed for the door, I flung it open, but as luck would have it, there was a very nicely dressed businesswoman standing in the doorway. She had a very confused look on her face. She looked at me, then she looked at the sign on the door, then she looked at me again quite differently the second time. I hatched a new plan. I bent down on my lapel and I said, it's all clear. Miss, it's all clear and you may enter now. She said, well, thank you. And I said, no, thank you for coming to the San Gabriel Hilton. And I kept talking to my lapel all the way back to the meeting, you know, to, out of respect to the character, if you will. How do we get into these jams? What happens to us? Is it multitasking? Is it trying to do more than one thing at the same time? And the answer is no. The issue is much deeper than this. It's an issue that makes us want to do everything at the same time. It's not answering three simple life questions properly. Who am I? What do I want? How do I get it? Who am I? What do I want? How do I get it? Three simple questions, but the answers are not so simple. You see, you can't get what you want if you don't know what it is. And you can't really know what you want if you don't know who you are. And it's hard to know who you are when you could be three different people at any point in time. You can inhabit three unique brains. Let me explain using these very handsome dodgeballs. We're born with a primal brain. This brain is very focused, highly responsive. We're thrust into this brain situationally. This brain will allow you to do amazing things in an emergency. This brain will save your life. But the problem is this, it's not really the right brain you want to be in to answer the life question, what do I want? It would be like having a picnic in a war zone. It's not appropriate. Now, between the ages of three and six years old, we complete the formation of our emotional brain, our limbic system, the vault for all of our feelings. This brain is also your default brain. We spend most of our time in our emotional brain, and some, as you all know, never leave. I mean, you go to work, you talk with other adults, they speak back to you in three-syllable words, they're nicely dressed, but they're basically they're a bunch of six-year-olds. This might explain a lot about what happens to us in the workplace. And although this is your default brain, it's really not the correct brain to be in to answer the life question, what do I want? It would be like going grocery shopping if you're hungry. You tend to leave the store with a lot of junk food. 
Now, between the ages of 20 and 25 years old, we complete the formation of our higher brain, our prefrontal cortex. Now, this brain's something else. It strategizes, it analyzes, it solves problems, it predicts, it visualizes, it models. It's got all the tools you need to answer the life question, what do I want properly? But the problem is this, how do we get into this brain? It's not your default brain, and it's not situational. We're not thrust into our higher brain. You have to want to go there. But I have good news for you today. I brought you a brain app, an application that will allow you to access your higher brain in seconds. Then we can answer the life question properly, what do I want? And then I'll show you how to get what you want. Let's do it together. Please, everyone, close your eyes for a moment. Close your eyes and take a deep breath. Exhale slowly. Now relax your shoulders, your arms. Relax your hands. Relax your neck, your jaw. Relax your whole face. Deep breath. Exhale slowly. Now, in your hand, visualize a banana. Hold a banana in your hand, a golden yellow ripe banana. Hold it. Feel the skin. Deep breath. Exhale slowly. Okay, now let's peel the banana together, halfway down. Four sides. Side one, peel. Side two. Side three. Now side four. Now look at that banana. Deep breath. Exhale. Now take a bite. Taste the banana. Taste that delicious, luscious banana, the best banana you've ever had. Taste it. Now keep your eyes closed and breathe normally. Answer this question for me in one or two words silently. What do you really want? What do you want? Okay, you can open your eyes now. You were just in your prefrontal cortex. And with the answer to that question, I can now show you how to get what you want. When I was a young man, I knew exactly what I wanted. Money. And I made a lot of money. At one point, I worked for a very wealthy broker in Beverly Hills. His name was Julian. I never actually met him. I'd seen pictures of him, but I didn't need to. He would call me for jobs. I'd go do them. And then he would send me a big check. On this particular day, he asked me to go to the port of Long Beach because one of his shipments had been seized in customs. I drove out there, I met with a customs agent for about an hour, and I got it released. I called Julian. He was so happy. He said, Mike, I was gonna send you a big fat check, but I gotta meet the young man that did this. I want you to come down to my office in Beverly Hills. I have a special reward for you. I'm thinking, ka -ching! What is it, cash, money? Is it a car, is it a boat? Maybe property, my mind was racing. I raced down to Beverly Hills at Beverly and Wilshire. I went up to the ninth floor in his office building. I was almost running down the hallway to his office, but in front there was standing a very large individual in a three-piece suit. When I approached him, I saw under his lapel there was a gun. I was scared. He said, are you Mike? I went. He said, go in. I walked into the most beautiful office I've ever seen in my life. It had a panoramic view of Los Angeles. It had a couch in the office. It had a bar, a bar in the office. It had a picture of Julian on the wall, hugging the governor. I thought, I've arrived, this is it. I heard my name, Mike, come into the conference room. It was Julian. I walked into the conference room and sat down. He excused another very large individual. He began telling me about his immense wealth his two homes in Malibu, his car collection, his vacations, his business ventures, his investments. And then he abruptly stopped and he said, you know, Mike, I didn't call you down here to tell you about me. I called you down here to give you a special reward. Now, I was gonna write you a big, huge check today, but after getting to know you in these last few minutes, you just don't seem like that kind of guy to me. I'm thinking, <laughs> I am that kind of guy, that's me. He said, no, instead, I've decided to give you some advice and then your freedom. Listen carefully. Sometimes the money you make isn't worth the price you have to pay. And you're fired. 
And the large individual came in and dumped me in the hallway and slammed the door. I sat there stunned. This isn't the way it works. You do amazing things, you make lots of money. You do wonderful things, you make lots of money. I don't even remember walking to my car. A couple of months later, I found out that Julian was involved in organized crime. And that day, he did me a favor. He cut me loose before I did damage to myself, maybe even lost my life. I appreciated this, and I had a different answer to that question that day because I asked it from a different perspective, a higher, a higher perspective. And I'm asking you to do the same thing. And with the answer to that question, with the correct answer to that question, I want to show you now how to get what you want. Shall we do it together? Tonight, tomorrow, the next day, on a piece of paper, I'm asking you to write down all of your tasks, everything that you're doing, personal and professional. Taking out the garbage, mowing the grass, doing the dishes. Sir, your wife asked me to talk about that. I don't know <laughs> why. Uh, vacations, uh, remodeling, the business associations you're involved in, everything. Write them down and don't enter them into a computer. Write them, use your muscle memory, expand your brain. Then use your free brain app. Take a few seconds and access your higher brain and ask that question and get your simple answer, one or two words. Then open your eyes and look at all those tasks. Circle the tasks that support what you want. They're going to pop right out at you, believe me. You're going to have some tasks left behind. I want to help you dispose of those right now. First, delete all the tasks that aren't important. Some you don't even know why you're doing them. Put a big red X through them. And remember this, a task deleted is a task completed. <laughs> Number two, give back, give. Look at all those tasks that you're doing, the work that you're doing that others should be doing. You all know what I mean. Put an X through those as well and keep this in mind. Isn't it always better to give than receive? <laughs> Number three, delegate the rest. Transfer that work to others that can do the work for you. Now, in order to do delegation, you may have to overcome some blocks. Blocks like fear of failure, inability to, to trust others, our obsession with perfection but do overcome those blocks because we need to dispose of all those tasks so that you can get what you want. Now, as you might imagine, if you do everything I've asked you to do, to do today, you may have some difficult conversations. Matter of fact, you will. And I'm asking you to have those. Have those conversations for yourself and for your future. But I'd like to give you some advice. Some advice that's thousands and thousands of years old that will help you. You see, my Native American ancestors teach that all power comes from within. And if we lose our power along the way, if we've grown weak, it's because we gave it away. But the good news is this, your power always belongs to you and you can grab it back, you can snatch it back. And all you have to do is remember who you really are and remember what you really want. And it'll come raining back on you, believe me. Remember who you are before you walk into work every morning while you're still sitting in your car. Remember before an important meeting or before a difficult conversation. Remember if you're angry or if you're sad. Remember if you're afraid. And remember before you go to sleep at night and have sweet, sweet dreams. And if you remember, like I'm asking, you will find the deep, rich happiness that you so richly deserve. And for me, the answer to the question, what do I want, has changed. It's no longer money. Today, it's freedom. But not the freedom to do what's right, what others want me to do, what others expect, but the freedom to do the right thing, the right thing. And on this stage, right here, right now, I wish the same for you. Just remember, thank you. <laughs>